if you want some information on radios, batteries and solar charging, stay tuned. Today there are many handheld radios, often called walkie-talkies, that can be bought quite cheaply and have a range, under ideal conditions, of up to 10 kilometres. Although cheap and using either rechargeable battery packs, rechargeable batteries or ordinary one-use batteries, they are good for keeping communications in small groups who don't have much radio skill. In many cases, you set to the channel you want, press the push to talk button, talk, release and then listen. Because of the frequency that walkie-talkies work at, most of the signals travel at line of sight, which means that the signals are reduced by things like buildings and especially forests, and hills can stop signals passing altogether. For the best transmission and reception, aerial height is more important than power. So for the best results, one needs to get to the top of a clear, unwooded hill and take it from there. Walkie-talkies are battery powered. Because they're battery powered, the battery packs or batteries need to be recharged or replaced. But what is important is the batteries need to be working. Battery packs are device specific, but the contents can often be replaced by normal rechargeable batteries. However, charging them is another matter. Some can be put in the battery packs and recharged, others have to be recharged separately. If you're going to use individual batteries rather than a battery pack, make sure that they come from the same manufacturer and preferably have been manufactured and charged at the same time. To check the state of your battery, a battery tester is recommended. They're small, cheap and give inaccurate reading. However, if you have not got one and your batteries are suspect, try putting them next to a compass. A strong new battery will move the compass needle faster and more than an old, almost dead one. If you're going to store your personal mobile radio for long periods, it's best to follow the manufacturer's instructions. It's usually a good idea to store them with a newly charged battery pack. The worst idea is to use individual, primary or single-use batteries that are going to leak over time. If batteries run down in the field, the best option is to carry a spare battery pack or carry single-use non-rechargeable batteries. In the longer term, in the field, you will either have to use a solar power charging device or dynamo. Behind glass, in poor light conditions, after three and a half hours, the battery has been marginally improved, but only marginally. Charging the solar panel directly from behind glass on a grey day doesn't really work. The second experiment of three and a half hours is to charge one battery from a pre-charged solar battery bank. Right from the beginning, it seems to be much more effective than the solar panel. In less than two hours, the single AA battery has been recharged. For this next experiment, we've placed the solar panels outside the window and we'll leave them there for three and a half hours. The day was slightly sunny, but mostly grey. However, after three and a half hours outside the window, the battery was fully charged. After two and a half hours, on a grey but fairly bright day, all four batteries had been charged to capacity. One thing to bear in mind is there are many types of connectors for chargers. Quite popular is the USB connector, which although cheaper for the manufacturer than putting on a dedicated plug, means you can attach your charger to many different devices. The solar systems, even though they work well, are sunlight and weather dependent. It's best to use them in direct sunlight 
rather than behind glass, which although transparent, really reduces the effectiveness of the solar panels. Solar panels are good for direct charging, but they don't store the energy, although the slower charging power banks do. You can charge up during the daytime and use the energy at night or any other time you like. Solar devices, including lamps, are a good, easy to use field expedient. They have their place in every prepper survival bushcraft's arsenal, but they have their limitations. Nevertheless, try them out, get out there, get training, you know it makes sense, it will serve you well. Thank you to everyone who watches, comments and subscribes.